Hello everybody, I am Fuzzy Face and welcome to another edition of this playthrough of Motorsport Manager Career Mode. We are currently, if you're not familiar with this series, we are with the Predator Racing Group. We've moved up from the European series, we are now in the Asia Pacific series and we're doing quite well. Santa Ana is in the driver's standing at 4th, Mia Latinen is 8th in the driver's standings after, I think we've done 7 races now. Uh, team wise we're in the Constructors Championship, we're on 30 points, we've got a nice little cushion here of 14 points over Kruger. There's only 4 points here up to the MRT so we're not far off 2nd place although we're a long way behind the Esprit which should look like they're walking away with this and obviously that's all down to De Graaf here, he's scored 46 of the 48 points they've got and if you look at this the MRT 34 points she's scored all the points that they've got and it's pretty much the same with Boa so pretty much every team is a one driver team so we're probably in relation to that yeah maybe not we are pretty much a one driver team as well but and it's probably pretty hard to score points as well for a lot of these because you only score points for being in the top five and you get points for being in pole position two points and you get two points for having the fastest lap so anyway we don't have much to do before the practice we're waiting for this telemetry center to be built we've got a vote coming up which we're hopefully going to get put through for the spec rear wins we've got uh, three votes saved up I think it's three votes saved up yeah that means we've got plus three I think so we've got four votes to put into this so hopefully we can get that push through I'm guessing a lot of the teams are gonna vote against it hopefully they don't and we get a uh, spec rear wings put in here much like the engine that means it's a bit more competitive um, everyone has the same rear wing obviously that's the worst part we have because we haven't been working on it just in the hope that we could get this vote put through anyway we need to build a gearbox now this is our third yeah it's our third iteration of the design we want to unlock the fourth iteration we can't quite do that yet because I think to unlock this you need to go green light blue so you need to get like the average part a good part and a great part to fill this up and that unlocks slot four so maybe we can do it early it's probably going to be a bit of a risk here like we fill that up we fill this up uh, Latinum's part is a 3-3-4 at the moment so we will be able to improve it to uh, so it's better than the current part that she's got and then if we do that that gives us now a great part so then this should unlock the fourth iteration of the design and allow us to put four parts in next time so we can probably go like one of the average one of the goods and then two of these well actually we probably do that one that one that one and that one so that would give us uh, 130 155 extra on top of this so we would be pushing just over the 500 mark for our gearbox that we should be able to get next season obviously with this one it's going to put plus two this is one of the designers special component parts that the parts that they can build um the next one is a risk level minus one no because we do need one of these next time to be able to unlock the fourth design do we or could we go bang bang that and then a minus one and use that part towards the end of the season and then build the last part as that 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 and that I wonder if the game would allow us to do that because we can't unlock slot 5 because we can't put an epic part in but then we could put an epic part in here and unlock 5 parts like this 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 and this which would give us an amazing part for next season maybe we can do that so that's probably what we're going to do so we're going to go with this one this time and see if it unlocks slot 4 when the telemetry center is built it's going to be done 9 days before the race obviously the reliability is up so we're going to be able to put it in the car so hopefully we can get the performance worked on before the next race and have a nice uh, new part that's a lot better than the current part in the car so we've just got that vote coming up so we're gonna go ahead and skip to there there's not much else to do we're still working on a, little, a few parts although everything's pretty much up to scratch we don't have any parts we can improve in Santa Ana's car uh, the parts in Latin's car we can improve like three points and everything is reliable now not fully reliable but to the point where we don't have any problems so we're just gonna go ahead and skip to the vote and come back when that's done so we'll just uh, yeah the car repairs done so we're gonna go ahead and skip now right up to the vote or oh, probably the gearbox I think the gearbox is done the day before the vote looks like it 15 days does it tell us there two weeks left so whichever's first we'll come back on that and see what we can do right so we're a day before the vote we've got five days to go for the telemetry center we've got the gearbox built now so I'm hoping it's unlocked that slot do we have four slots now that we can build in yes we do so that worked we could actually go ahead and get an early building here but we're not going to do that we're going to wait until we've got the telemetry center built when we come back for that because once this is built we're going to be able to put one of these plus one parts in 
and then a minus one. So we're going to do something like you know, do something like this, aren't we? So we'll do like that, and then put this in. So then we can have a part rated 420 toward the end of the season. And then obviously using this one means we fill this up, which means we get slot five open, which means we can put five parts in. So we be able to do this, this, this one, and this one. Although we won't need to put that in because we've all got already got slot five open. So we'll do that one, that one, that one, this one, and that one. So that adds 130 onto that, so we will have a base of 500 and we'll be able to improve it another 40. So we should have a part rated 540 going into next season, which is an absolutely massive leap forward for our team. So we're just waiting on the telemetry centre to be built for that. We've got the gearbox here to work on, we're not really working on much else because everything is pretty much reliable. So we can just go ahead and concentrate on this gearbox here. And obviously it's reliable enough, but we might as well get it up as much as we can. And maybe if we swap Dunbar over here, yeah, it's going to be pretty much up to up to the level just before the race or would we be better off doing that because he takes <laughs> he takes a lot less time to work on the reliability of the parts so maybe that'll get that up as well and then we'll probably be around somewhere around the five three five five mark for that but we might as well stick with this now because the votes tomorrow so we'll just go ahead and do the vote here obviously we're going to sync all our four votes into voting four but there is a lot of teams against this five so don't think we're going to get put this put through because I think a lot of these have plus ones anyway. I think we're going to lose this vote. So we've got four votes for from the start. So we're now five up. Hopefully it's going to go our way. Oh, he's using two, three. Everyone else is going against it, it looks like. We're actually losing now. Seven votes down. Six, seven. Ah, oh, is it going to be up to. No! Eight to seven, as if. <laughs> So close there, even though we used all our votes up, we got pretty close there, but we've got the HQ being built now. Five days to go, we might as well stick with this until practice now. Well, until we've done this, because then we're just going to go ahead and see if we can get one of these parts in the gearbox. Uh, for the gearbox, I should say. So we're going to go with that one. Um... We can't put two risky parts in it because we're going to actually use one of them towards the end of the season. So should we go for a plus 10? Give it a little bit more boost and this one so then we don't have to get it up to speed as much. No, we do want to. We can't use that one because we want to use this one, don't we? So this one, we can get this one up to 420 now. So we do have an epic part in the car for the first time. And look, it would be amazing if we could get that telemetry centre to level 3. Because then we could use these massive parts. You know, look at this, if we could get a part built one season with all of this, it would be amazing. It's going to be a long time before we can improve the telemetry centre up to that point. Because we're going to want to improve other parts first. So we've got this part now, which is 384. Can be improved to 420, 45% reliability. But that's no problem because we don't have anything else to work on. We do have a plus 1 wrist part, which is obviously negated by this. So it's minus 1. So that's going to be ready 15 days after this race, and obviously it's a long time till the Australian Grand Prix. So we're going to have a nice new, really high-rated part here for Santa Rana, and we'll see what sort of, uh, we'll see how competitive a part-rated 420 is compared to the other teams. We are making quite a giant leap forward with that, so hopefully we can get pretty close to them. So that's going to cost 1.4 million. We've got enough this time out, and we'll have enough. Uh, enough money after the next race to build that last part, that part that we're not going to use this season. Um, yeah, because we're not going to risk it in a car just in case it gets banned because then we won't have that uh, base to build on next season. And we'll just see if we can... It is that the best part that we've developed ourselves and that's because we've been working on it. We'll just see where that gets us. So we're just going to go ahead now and skip to the Rio de Janeiro Grand Prix practice and we'll come back when we're setting up the car. So we're back here for practice. This time I did go with the sponsorship offer of the 800,000 one, so we'll have 400,000 for practice and 400,000 pounds for the race. But as usual, any time that we've accepted the higher payment, we've never finished high up the table because we have to finish fourth or higher for that. Obviously, we've done that a few times this season. Obviously, we did it in the last race where we finished second and fourth. But every time we've actually gone for that sponsorship offer, we've never actually got it. So as usual, we're going to go with Santa Ana and Maya Latinen in the car. And I've been looking forward to this Brazilian Grand Prix because it's a lot like the Sao, the Sao Paulo Grand Prix, the track layout, especially on this track, track layout that we've got for the Asia Pacific Super Cup. It's a lot like the real life Sao Paulo track. And as like this year in Brazil, 
it's going to be raining and there's a forecast of rain for the race so we're going to have a nice wet race here for Brazil um, so what do we need here I'm not going to mess with the downforce too much I do think we do need some high downforce even though we've got this for the mechanic here it's going to be too far so maybe just knock it up a tiny little bit and I think we're going to need nice long gear ratios because it's quite a nice flowing track as well so we don't need the acceleration as much should we go 63 and we need the handling all the way down here so we'll go pretty high here we need nice understeer I think we'll leave it as that um, it looks like we need the intermediate and I'll leave Latinen in the middle do we'll go a little bit higher on the gear ratios she wants the handling quite we'll go all the way with the handling there just see how that comes out for us and I'll go out set some lap times do some practice on that and we'll pick up at the end of practice and see what sort of times we got and I'll talk through what changes we made to these setups so practice is over now we didn't have the best of practice sessions there uh, 130 and 132 although that's where we finished last time out and we had a good qualifying we weren't really trying to set lap times, just trying to get the setup just right. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead now. We've got to get far, far above in qualifying. Um, it looks like it's going to be... We can't really trust that because there's clouds coming, so maybe it's going to rain towards the end of the session. So we're going to have to get out pretty quickly. So we won't put the intermediate tyre bonus on, but we're going to try and set a lap as quickly as we can whilst it's dry. And here we go, we got the car set up, it's pretty much bang on, we got a 98% here for Santa Ana. We started off pretty good, but then couldn't find quite the correct balance for the speed balance there. But we started off pretty well, we're going to go on the ultra softs here just as we start. Yeah, just the ultra softs for practice, uh, qualifying even. I was just uh, 8 to 10 laps off the ultra softs on this, it said it was quite high tyre wear, but I'm sure it said it was quite high tyre wear for Brazil. But anyway, I think it's only a 13 lap race is this one, so if that can do 10 laps, we're going to be able to do a really long stink, uh, stint to start with with Santa Ana like we usually do. Probably get about 8 laps, because it, no, it's going to give us 6 laps of fuel, isn't it? So we're going to just go ahead and push anyway, I guess. So we'll be able to push these tyres a little bit, it seems. Uh, last time we got right, we didn't have the best start of, like we did with Santa Ana, we just had one purple with her. Uh, went the wrong way with the downforce there and then the last stint we managed to get everything shored up and get an excellent uh, set up there and we're going to do the ultra softs with her as well so who do we go with to tech out first so I'm going to send it looks like it might stay dry it's forecast rain for the race it didn't forecast any rain for qualifying but maybe there will be but we're going to send Santa Ana out first anyway <clears throat> and like the last update if you saw it we're going to come back this time just for the hot laps or when the first driver is starting their hot lap and go from there so we're going to skip ahead to that part now and see how we get on obviously like last time I'm going to aim for clear air rather than getting the tyre temperatures and the brake temperatures right that seemed to work out really well with us last time and we had our best, pre uh, best qualifying session to date so that's what we're going to do here try and get some uh, clear, clear air away from a lot of the other cars and see how we do right so we're going round for Santa Ana's lap here we ended up way too overheated trying to stay ahead of the car behind managed to get some nice distance we couldn't try to get past us did cramps but we got quite a nice distance there to a car in front of us I think everyone is out of the pits now so we should have a nice clear lap here with Santa Ana hopefully we're not going to catch a lot of these cars on their out lap Latin and now we're just going to try to concentrate on her getting her some clear air it looks like she's got some nice clear air from the car behind there, although we're going to have to speed up a bit. We might just be able to get these tyre temperatures just at the right speed. And look at that, it started raining. Great, so just as we predicted, we couldn't see it at the start of the race. Um, Santa Ana's part way through a lap. Should we pull her in or do we? No, we're going to let her do it. We're going to pull Latin in it because there's going to be no time at all that we can sit on this just pull her in hopefully she didn't hold Santa Rana up here so hopefully Santa Rana is going to get a nice boost it doesn't look like it the water's just too bad but hopefully she got a good first sector of that lap in 
which might help her out here. Is this rain going to last till the end of the session? I don't know. But we need to try and set a quick time here. And this is why I only use one set of intermediates in practice because I thought it was going to rain here and I do want three nice new sets for... Um, I want three nice sets for the actual race because we're going to be doing three stops. Although we should be able to get one set through, maybe. But we might as well have nice new tyres each time we pit. So, we won't send her out just yet. We'll, we'll risk keeping her in here. So we're down into third. A lot of these other cars are still on the Ultrasofts. Well, they all came out on the Ultrasofts. Maybe we should have let Latinan set a time, but I think she would have been way off here. We're just going to see if this rain starts to... See if we can get a lap in towards the end of the session. It does look like it's going to stop raining, but it doesn't look like it... Right, so it's going to stop, isn't it? So can we time this just right to get Latin and around on a pair of Ultrasofts here? Can we do that? Let's see if we can get that done. She's going to have to go slow for a bit in the hope that we can get it dried out here. It looks like we've got time to get... What's the timing on this lap? 1.30, so we've got time to wait for Santa Ana. When's it going to start drying out here? Right to the end of this session. So should we get Santa Ana geared up and ready to go? It looks like we're going to get quite a lot of clear air here. With we'll get, oh. We might just try and wait a little bit with Santa Ana because we're going to get some grip back towards the end of the session here as it starts uh, drying out. Let's just see what we can do here. We don't want Latinan to finish his lap too early. I think this is the only lap she's going to be able to get done. And there's a lot of cars going slow around that part of the track. So a lot of them are coming out now. Just see if we can get these somewhere near. A bit overheated on the brakes. But we're going to be pretty clear here for, San, uh, for Latinan. We're going to have to try and get Santa Ana out. Just let Latinum come past in the pits. And we've just got enough time here to get Santa Ana out. So we'll stick with we'll stick with qualifying now. Just see what we can get here. Try and get Santa Ana some nice clear air. Looks like we've got that. So maybe we can concentrate a bit more on this. Should we go try and heat these up? No, because we'll catch that car in front. There's a car starting to catch us from behind now. I think he's doing a flying lap, isn't he? We don't want him to get in front of us. He'll be slowing down for his in-lap, so we'll try to stay in front of him. So that means we have to be a bit, a little bit overheated for this lap. And we've managed to get Latinan up into first there, because she's a first round on this nice new dry track. And we just got Santa Ana across the line in time, so a lot of these might not get to set uh, times here. So we got first on the podium here, first on the grid here. Um, it'd be amazing if we could do that, and Santa Ana's absolutely flying around here. She's going quicker than Latinan's time. What can we get? First, and look at that. First on the grid there, timed it absolutely to perfection, getting Santa Ana across the line with a few seconds to spare. Got, uh, I'm not sure how much grip we actually get, I didn't see that, but we're first and fifth on the grid. So we actually get this £400,000 bonus now. Absolutely brilliant. So let's see what we can do from here in the race. So now it is race time. Here, it's... Uh, Oh, it's going to start out dry, isn't it? Is everyone going to, is everyone going to start on the intermediates? It looks like they are, isn't it? We've got two laps of dry racing. I wonder if everyone else is going to start out on intermediates. Because this race is only 13 laps long. We've got six laps of fuel two laps of dry weather racing so if we could do two laps of dry weather on the ultrasoft and then pit would we get enough of an advantage for when we join the middle of the field should we risk that for one of the drivers and who should we risk it for <laughs> um i think santa Ana is a little bit better equipped to do that maybe so should we bring her out on the ultra softs? Are we going to be able to get two laps out of this? So would three laps be enough to push all the way around for two laps? Ooh, do, do, do. It should be, shouldn't it? it? Should just be enough. 
And of course, we're going to bring uh, Latinan out on these intermediate tyres here. And obviously, she's going to try and go six laps here. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll we'll take a big we'll take a risk here. We'll try get Santa Ana in at the end of lap two, and then she can put on intermediates. So we've only got three laps of fuel in here. So hopefully that's enough to get round twice whilst pushing. Should be enough. And of course we're gonna have Latin and go a lot longer than everyone else. Just keep an eye on the weather. See when the rain's gonna stop. You know, it has selected tires which don't suit the current weather conditions. It's not raining at the moment and the track's dry for two laps it says. Or is that two laps? Is that just one lap? Oh, decisions, decisions, what can we do here? Is it going to be a massive mistake doing this? That's lap three, isn't it? So it's going to start raining after the first lap. No, we're not going to take that risk. We're not going to risk it. <laughs> we're going to just go normal. I won't risk it. This, these, uh, the thing at the top's a little bit longer than it usually is because we usually have longer lap races, so... I think two of these bars just about represent one lap. It looks like five bars represent the three laps, so two bars could just be over one lap. But could we get enough advantage um, from one lap of racing on the Ultra Soft? Could we? Oh, I'm so tempted to risk it. But I'm not going to. I'm going to stick with this. I'm going to stick with this. So we're going to have... Uh, we're still going to stick with our normal strategy, try to go a bit longer. We'll have uh, San Aunt Santa Ana come in first, so we'll have her push a little bit. We're still going to try and go a little bit longer than everyone else, just keep an eye on the weather. Just hope we don't mess this up. Oh. See how far it takes before it starts raining. Oh, look at that start from Santa Ana there, she's off like a rocket. Pulling away here, first place. She's still gaining a gap here. Uh, no, they're starting to catch her now. So when's this rain going to start? It's just going to start at the end of this lap, isn't it? So I wonder what we could have done on ultra softs there. And then uh, just two pit stops. We'd have still have had the same amount of pit stops. Just don't know how much time we'd have been able to pick up there from intermediates. What did we do? One thirty. Um, did we get an ultra soft timing? I can't remember what the qualifying time was. Probably not enough time to risk what we were going to do there. So, should we have Santa Ana push for a little bit here? She's going to come in first, just to keep her in first place. She's going to make this first pit stop. And now we've got the rain. It's going to get heavy around lap three. Still intermediate weathers and Santa Ana doing a good job of hanging on to first place here. Oh, the Sar. Latin is dropping down the order a bit, but that's just because we're sticking to her strategy. The tyres are warming quite nicely here. Usually I have a bit of problem sometimes getting the intermediates up to temperature. Seems to like be doing quite well around here, around Sa uh, not Sao Paulo, let's see actually on this one's Rio de Janeiro, but it looks like the rain's going to stop soon, doesn't it? So maybe we could have them push, just keep an eye on that weather. We're going to go ahead and turn Santa Ana down. We'll try to conserve these tyres a little bit. Same for Latinan. Santa Ana's doing a real good job here of hanging on to first place. Hopefully we can get the pit stops right as the rain starts to stop. It does look like it's going to stop at some point. Is it going to stop long enough for dry tyres? Or is it going to do like it did in qualifying and we're going to rain, stop and then rain again towards the end of the race? Santa Ana doing a real good job here in first place. I didn't think she'd be able to keep it up like this. But we're going to have to pit before it dries out, aren't we? But that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Because everyone else will probably be trying to do the same. Could we make... Could we make Latin and go that long? By turning her engine down, would she lose places doing that? Can we get Latin and through? Another two full laps? It looks like we could without pushing, without turning her down anyway, doesn't it? So we're probably at the right spot there. We're just going to have to see where Santa Ana is here when she needs to make a pit stop. It 
is actually the lap after this one anyway, however we go about it. So we might as well have her overtake and push these tyres. She is going to have to make a pit stop. And a lot of them now are coming in. Are they going to have to go? What are they going to swap to? Most of them going for dry tyres. So that means we can actually go ahead and put the dry tyres on there. So that's really going to work in our favour for Santa Ana. Everyone's coming in for dry tyres. So everyone's going to be quite a long way behind here. Because we've got this full lap that we've done on the Inters. And Latinen's got another... She's got another lap after this one on the Inters on a wet track. <coughs> so it's really going to work out for Latinen here. So... What we're going to go with here, we should be able to go on the ultra softs. I don't know why everyone else is putting softs on here, because they're not going to be able to get to the end of the race on these, on this, on this fuel. It seems like a weird decision for him to go with that. We're going to go with that anyway. We're going to try a fast one. So we can have Santa Ana push here. She's got enough time in her to get back out in first. It looks like she does have. What's Latin going to be like for fuel as she comes to Brown? So maybe we're going to have to just uh, wait until she gets round to see what we're going to be like and see if we can push her for this uh, next lap. So Santa Rana is in the pits now. Can she get out in second place here? She's a long way ahead in second place here. And we are on the ultra softs. So Latin and now coming through. So if we turn that up into overtake mode, let's see what she's got just enough to get round there going to put on a nice fresh pair of ultra soft tyres we're going to go six laps here um it could be almost enough to get her to the end of the race here she's going to be on lap seven after this so if we don't push it and we run the low engine mode for some of it <coughs> she might be able to get through this with just one stop but then again, the weather might be changing again. Um, we're going to go ahead and turn Santa Ana down here. We want this full fuel tank almost. Although we don't really need the full fuel tank here. Is she actually gaining time here? No, we're actually losing time. So maybe the softs are a bit better. Yeah, they probably are better in the bit wet. Uh, but we're not losing that much time. So we should be able to start pulling away again. We've got a nice good lead here with both cars. Because Latinen's coming in now probably attack on these tyres till the end, we've got enough life in them. I'm going to get ready now to turn uh, Latinen down, see where she can get to and Santa Ana's just got out ahead of her there. Latinen and Santa Ana <laughs> running first and second here with a massive gap, coming up to a nice dry track now. So let's see, both of these cars behind us sort of catching up a little bit. They're pushing, they're pushing and we're not. So... Sai is gaining here. So they might be on a be at catchers before the end of the race. So we might see if we can get Santa Ana ahead here. All these cars, but then we just need to keep an eye on the weather, don't we? I don't think it's gonna yeah, it's not gonna rain any time towards the end of the race. So we're just gonna see if we can push uh Santa Ana a little bit here. Her tires are getting a little bit hot. We'll just turn it down, we'll just have a push, see where we can get her to. Is she gaining a Latin and now she is. And actually, are these cars sticking around this time behind us? And behind Latin, it looks like they are. We're just going to keep pushing Santa Rana here. We're going to try and get her around. Should we turn her down now? Would that give us three laps on these tyres? I'm not quite sure. And it looks like we're going to be dry now to the end of the race. So we're a long way in front. <laughs> front. <laughs> Getting over excited here. A lot of these cars are making their second pit stop now. Um, yeah, so I can't believe that we might end up with a 1 2 here. Obviously, the rain playing well into our hands here. Way out in front with both cars. Looks like, it looks like we might just be able to get two more laps out of Santa Ana. Almost. Or should we risk it? Should we just go ahead and push here? We're going to hit some back markers, aren't we? We'll just go ahead and have a push. So we've got three laps of fuel left there. We don't quite have enough in Latinan's car to get her around either, so we'll maybe go ahead and have her push now as well. We won't push the tyres, and we don't need to push the tyres here, do we? We don't want these getting too hot and end up actually losing time instead. So we've got Santa Ana now coming in for another pair of ultra softs here. 
what can we put in her till the end of the race just enough to push just in case we need it so we can't actually catch him back markers here I think this is our first time ever lapping a car who's in third place did graph but they've still got to make a pit stop as well we've got enough time to get in the pits and out just hope we don't get held up by these back markers seem to be letting us through but we did lose about five seconds there trying to get past that back marker but are we going to get in and out still in second place whilst the car behind's got to make a pit stop yes we do and Latinan's coming in this lap could we get away with those tyres we could probably get away with those tyres till the end of the race we just need more fuel oh that would be cheeky and that would probably be handy in Latin and the win wouldn't it if we change tyres if we didn't would it <laughs> so she would get out in first place with that would she still get out with first place with this it looks like she would do wouldn't it and that what does she need to get through to the end of the race just that so it looks like she's going to end up coming out of the pits in first place Latin and so this could be Latin and's first win here it just depends what sort of uh, how close Santa Ana can get to her here Santa Ana's gaining on her so we're going to see what they're like after this pit stop and it looks like De Graff is going to try to do it on a one stopper here or unless they're coming in after this one <laughs> he's actually run out of fuel there so that looks like first and second actually confirmed there because this car in third place here De Graff has run out of fuel so that looks like it's our one two confirmed here Santa Ana now coming round. Can she get back past Latin and can she regain her first place? Coming out pretty close there. So she can pretty much go ahead and turn down now. Uh, we've got Latin and should we try and give her the option of catching her? Don't really want them dam damaging each other close to the end, but we'll give Latin and the chance to see if she can outrace Santa Ana here. Although we've got the option of turning Santa Ana up now, haven't we? You can actually push them both here. So I don't think Latin is going to catch. No, she's falling behind here. So should we just go ahead and have uh, just have both cars take it nice and steady till the end now. So a final lap with first and second. We're a long way to third place. So it's going to be an excellent, amazing one-two here. And that's De Graff there, is it? Did he go around without coming into the pits whilst he was out of fuel? Does that mean like a retirement? He ran out of fuel here. On the last lap so has he gone round again we know a few or is it just taking him that long to get to there <laughs> I'm not quite sure uh, Latinan is falling behind Santa Ana here she's not the better driver and a car's not as good but look at that Santa Ana in first just crossing the line and we'll catch Latinan crossing the line here across the line yeah this one's for you fuzzy face says Santa Ana and all right P2 nice one says Latinan an amazing result there one and two I don't know what that's going to do for us there in the championship standings. Maybe it puts us somewhere close back to first place somehow. I said I was looking forward to the Rio de Janeiro Grand Prix because it sort of matches the track of the Sao Paulo Grand Prix, which is one of my favourite circuits. It's always been one of my favourite circuits from playing the early F1 games. And, um, yeah, absolutely amazing result there. I can't quite believe just the uh, weather playing into our hands there as everyone else made this sort of weird early pit stop although they were forced to come in early and change to these dry tyres otherwise they'd have to come in and do a, another lap on the intermediates whilst making a pit stop for fuel so it was the only sort of option they had um, maybe it's because the AI has the same information about the weather that we do that they can't see four laps ahead and I don't think anyone has a forecasting centre we took that risk in going a long time on the intermediates I'll try to go as long as we could and it worked out an absolute treat for us there first and second we've got no dodgy parts um, so who else is with us round um, it's the we've got an MRT near us haven't we Monroe so she's outside the points and the other one was the Boa I don't think it's Co it's not Costa the other Boa yeah it's Cruz is who's the top in the other Boa so a boa did finish in the point points and we've got two bonus points there for Santa Ana so she's actually ended up with two points uh, Gabriel Sars moved down so we finished first and second 
look at that the first time we've I think that's the first time yeah definitely the first time that we've had both drivers on the podium there cost a whole 32 seconds behind there first place trophy there's a second place trophy behind here somewhere hiding and look at that Santa Randa now up into third place again in the constructors Maya up into six absolutely mighty duo there so where does that put us up into second and two points behind the Esprit now I said at the beginning of this update that we would have no chance of catching the Esprit and I don't think we've got any chance of keeping this going because it's just by an amazing amount of luck there in that Grand Prix although though, not amazing just good planning that we were the only ones going long the computer seemed to like to push quite a lot so absolutely amazing there and that means we pick up an extra 800,000 that means we've got the parts paid for that we want to build definitely and we might even think about being able to build something towards the HQ now as well at the end of the season depending upon the price of the new car so let's see where we're at overall first obviously because we're first and second uh, making some gains I don't know if they're going to make enough gains to actually move up a few points here but look at that nearly two million pounds in the bank there 2.2 million absolutely brilliant uh, let the game save come on game save don't crash on me <laughs> right so calendar we've got Sydney we've only got four races now so we're two-thirds of the way through the season Costa sets pace during practice. Santa Ana pips on van der Poel, so that's the first ever pole position. Car condition, absolutely brilliant from both drivers there. Uh, race winner plus 15 morale, although these don't matter because they're both at 100% anyway. And hard, hard fought win for Santa Ana. Absolutely brilliant. We've got this new gearbox that's going in the car for the next time as well. So things looking up there. Uh, we've got Sydney next time. It's another shorter race, so we might be able to have another. Well, it's not shorter in terms of distance. But in terms of laps, it seems to work out for us because hopefully in the 14 lap race as well, it's only you're only allowed six laps of fuel, which means a computer does sort of get forced into making earlier pit stops than we do because we like to run as far as we can, sort of coming at the beginning of lap seven if we can with one of the cars or towards or lap six and the other one the car before, and it seems to work really well in our favour. So hopefully might be a little chance of rain probably not much there's no more massive uh, downpours expected for the others so hopefully we can do all right in Sydney but anyway we're just we're gonna go ahead and click to car repair complete and then we can pick up from this point next next time and yeah so absolutely amazing one two result there for us brilliant around Rio de Janeiro but anyway, that's it for now. If you're not already subscribed and you want to see more 1-2 finishes, I'm joking, of course. That's our first 1-2 finish ever. Um, <laughs> but yeah, anyway, if you want to see more content from me, more of this motorsport update on the Predator team, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. If you're not already subscribed, give me a thumbs up if you think we did excellent in getting a 1-2. And leave me a comment down below. Uh, I do try and reply to every comment, so... If you do leave one, I will probably reply with, if you have any suggestions or anything, anything you want to see me do. Or if you want, if there's anything you want to see me build at the end of the season with the HQ, any suggestions. We've got the telemetry center built, we've got the design center up to level 2, and we've got the factory level up to 2. But anyway, that's all for this update, so I'll see you down the road in Sydney, and goodbye. Practice is over. Now, we didn't have the best of practice sessions there. Uh, 1.30 and 1.32, although that's where we finished last time out and we had a good qualifying we weren't really trying to set lap times, just trying to get the setup just right. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead now. We've got to get far, far above in qualifying. Um, it looks like it's going to be... We can't really trust that because there's clouds coming, so maybe it's going to rain towards the end of the session. So we're going to have to get out pretty quickly. So we won't put the intermediate tyre bonus on, but we're going to try and set a lap as quickly as we can whilst it's dry. And here we go, we got the car set up, it's pretty much bang on, we got a 98% here for Santa Ana. We started off pretty good, but then couldn't find quite the correct balance for the speed balance there. But we started off pretty well, we're going to go on the ultra softs here just as we start. Yeah, just the ultra softs for 
practice, uh, qualifying even. I was just uh, 8 to 10 laps off the ultrasofts on this. It said it was quite high tyre wear, but I'm sure it said it was quite high tyre wear for Brazil. But anyway, I think it's only a 13 lap race, is this one, so if that can do 10 laps, I'm going to be able to do a really long stint, uh, stint to start with with Santa Rana like we usually do. Probably get about 8 laps, because it, no, it's going to give us 6 laps of fuel, isn't it? So we're going to just go ahead and push anyway, I guess. So we'll be able to push these tyres a little bit, it seems. Uh, last time we got right, we didn't have the best start of, like we did with Santa Rana, we just had one purple with her. Uh, went the wrong way with the downforce there, and then the last stint we managed to get everything shored up and get an excellent uh, set up there. And we're going to do the ultra sauce with her as well. So who do we go with to take out first? So I'm going to send, it looks like it might stay dry, it's forecast rain for the race. It didn't forecast any rain for qualifying, but maybe there will be. But we're going to send Santa Ana out first anyway. <clears throat> and like the last update, if you saw it, we're going to come back this time just for the hot laps or when the first driver starting their hot lap and go from there so we're going to skip ahead to that part now and see how we get on obviously like last time I'm going to aim for clear air rather than getting the tyre temperatures and the brake temperatures right that seemed to work out really well with us last time and we had our best pre uh, best qualifying session to date so that's what we're going to do here try and get some uh, clear, clear air away from a lot of the other cars and see how we do right so we're going round for Santa Ana's lap here. We ended up way too overheated trying to stay ahead of the car behind. Managed to get some nice distance. He kept trying to get past us. Did cramps, but we got quite a nice distance there to a car in front of us. I think everyone is out of the pits now. So we should have a nice clear lap here with Santa Ana. Hopefully we're not going to catch a lot of these cars on their out lap. Latin and now we're just going to try to concentrate on her getting us going to go ahead and skip to there There's not much else to do. We're still working on a, lot, a few parts although everything's pretty much up to scratch We don't have any parts we can improve in Santa Ana's car uh, The parts in Latin's car we can improve like three points and everything is reliable now Not fully reliable but to the point where we don't have any problems So we're just going to go ahead and skip to the vote and come back when that's done So we'll just uh, yeah the car repairs done so we're going to go ahead and skip now right up to the vote Oh, probably the gearbox. I think the gearbox is done the day before the vote. Looks like it's 15 days, does it tell us there? Two weeks left. So whichever's first, we'll come back on that and see what we can do. Right, so we're a day before the vote. We've got five days to go for the telemetry centre. We've got the gearbox built now, so I'm hoping it's unlocked that slot. Do we have four slots now that we can build in? Yes, we do, so that worked. We could actually go ahead and get an early build in here. But we're not going to do that, we're going to wait until we've got the telemetry centre built when we come back for that because once this is built we're going to be able to put one of these plus one parts in and then a minus one so we're going to do something like we're going to do something like this aren't we so we'll do like that and then put this in so then we can have a part rated 420 towards the end of the season and then obviously using this one means we fill this up which means we get slot 5 open which means we can put 5 parts in so we'll be able to do this, this, this one and this one, although we won't need to put that in because we've all got already got slot 5 open, so we'll do that one, that one, that one, this one, and that one. So that adds 130 onto that, so we will have a base of 500 and we'll be able to improve it another 40, so we should have a part rated 540 going into next season, which is an absolutely massive leap forward for our team. So we're just waiting on the telemetry centre to be built for that. We've got the gearbox here to work on, we're not really working on much else because everything is pretty much reliable so we can just go ahead and concentrate on this gearbox here. And obviously it's reliable enough but we might as well get it up as much as we can. And maybe if we swap Dunbar over, yeah it's going to be pretty much up to up to the level just before the race or would we be better off doing that because he takes, <laughs> he takes a lot less time to work on the reliability of the parts so maybe that will get that up as well and then we'll probably be around somewhere around the 355 five, five mark for that. But we might as well stick with this now because the vote's tomorrow, so we'll just go ahead and do the vote here. Obviously, we're going to sync all our four votes into voting four, but there is a lot of teams against this five, so... I don't think we're going to get put this put through because I think a lot of these have plus ones anyway. I think we're going to lose this vote. So we've got four votes for from the start, so we're now five up. Hopefully, it's going to go our way. Oh, he's using two, three... Everyone else is going against it, it looks like. We're actually losing now. Seven votes down. Six. Seven. Ah, oh, is it going to be up to... No! Eight to seven, as if. 
So close there, even though we used all our votes up. We got pretty close there, but we've got the HQ being built now. Five days for... <laughs> So close there, eh? even though we used all our votes up. We got pretty close there, eh? but we've got the HQ being built now. Five days to go, we might as well stick with this until practice now. Well, until we've done this, because then we're just going to go ahead and see if we can get one of these parts in the gearbox. Uh, for the gearbox, I should say. So we're going to go with that one. Um, we can't put two risky parts in it because we're going to actually use one of them towards the end of the season. So should we go for a plus 10? Give it a little bit more boost and this one so then we don't have to get it up to speed as much. No, we do want to. We can't use that one because we want to use this one, don't we? So this one, we can get this one up to 420 now. So we do have an epic part in the car for the first time. And look, it would be amazing if we could get that telemetry center to level three. Because then we could use these massive parts. You know, look at this, if we could get a part built one season with all this, it would be amazing. It's going to be a long time before we can improve the telemetry center up to that point because we're going to want to improve other parts first. So we've got this part now, which is 384, can be improved to 420, 45% reliability, but that's no problem because we don't have anything else to work on. We do have a plus one wrist part, which is obviously negated by this, so it's minus one. So that's going to be ready 15 days after this race, and obviously it's a long time till the Australian Grand Prix, so we're going to have a nice new, really high rated part here for Santa Rana. And we'll see what sort of, uh, we'll see how competitive a part rated 420 is compared to the other teams. We are making quite a giant leap forward with that, so hopefully we can get pretty close to them. So that's going to cost 1.4 million, we've got enough this time out, and we'll have enough... Uh, enough money after the next race to build that last part, that part that we're not going to use this season. Um, yeah, because we're not going to risk it in a car just in case it gets banned because then we won't have that uh, base to build on next season. And we'll just see if we can... It is that the best part that we've developed ourselves and that's because we've been working on it. We'll just see where that gets us. So we're just going to go ahead now and skip to the Rio de Janeiro Grand Prix practice and we'll come back when we're setting up the car. So we're back here for practice. This time I did go with the sponsorship offer of the 800,000 one, so we'll have 400,000 for practice and 400,000 pounds for the race. But as usual, any time that we've accepted the higher payment, we've never finished high up the table because we have to finish four for higher for that. Obviously we've done that a few times this season. Obviously we did it in the last race where we finished second and fourth. But every time we've actually gone for that sponsorship offer, we've never actually got it. So as usual, we're going to go with Santa Ana and Maya Latinen in the car. And I've been looking forward to this Brazilian Grand Prix because it's a lot like the Sao, the Sao Paulo Grand Prix, the track layout, especially on this track, track layout that we've got for the Asia Pacific Super Cup. It's a lot like the real life Sao Paulo track. Ah, building. Yes, we do. So that worked. We could actually go ahead and get an early building here. We're not going to do that. We're going to wait until we've got the telemetry centre built when we come back for that because once this is built, we're going to be able to put one of these plus one parts in and then a minus one. So we're going to do something like we're going to do something like this, aren't we? So we'll do like that and then put this in. So then we can have a part rated 420 towards the end of the season. And then obviously using this one means we fill this up, which means we get slot five open, which means we can put five parts in. So we'll be able to do this, this, this one and this one, although we won't need to put that in because we've all got already got slot 5 open, so we'll do that one, that one, that one, this one, and that one. So that adds 130 onto that, so we will have a base of 500 and we'll be able to improve it another 40, so we should have a part rated 540 going into next season, which is an absolutely massive leap forward for our team. So we're just waiting on the telemetry centre to be built for that. We've got the gearbox here to work on, we're not really working on much else because everything is pretty much reliable so we can just go ahead and concentrate on this gearbox here. And obviously it's reliable enough but we might as well get it up as much as we can. And maybe if we swap Dunbar over here yeah, it's going to be pretty much up to up to the level just before the race or would we be better off doing that because he takes, <laughs> he takes a lot less time to work on the reliability of the parts so maybe that will get that up as well and then we'll probably be around somewhere around the 355 five, five mark for that. But we might as well stick with this now because the vote's tomorrow. So we'll just go ahead and do the vote here. Obviously, we're going to sink all our four votes into voting four. But there is a lot of teams against this five. So I don't think we're going to get this put through because I think a lot of these have plus ones anyway. I think we're going to lose this vote. So we've got four votes for from the start. So we're now five up. Hopefully, it's going to go our way. Oh, he's using two, three. 
Everyone else is going against it, it looks like. We're actually losing now. Seven votes down. Six, seven. Ah, oh, is it going to be up to. No! Eight to seven, as if. <laughs> So close there, even though we used all our votes up. We got pretty close there, but we've got the HQ being built now. Five days to go, we might as well stick with this until practice now. Well, until we've done this, because then we're just going to go ahead and see if we can get one of these parts in the gearbox. Uh, for the gearbox, I should say. So we're going to go with that one. Um... We can't put two risky parts in it because we're going to actually use one of them towards the end of the season. So should we go for a plus 10? Give it a little bit more boost and this one so then we don't have to get it up to speed as much. No, we do want to. We can't use that one because we want to use this one, don't we? So this one, we can get this one up to 420 now. So we do have an epic part in the car for the first time. And look, it would be amazing if we could get that telemetry centre. Tell we've got enough this time out and we'll have enough... Uh, enough money after the next race to build that last part, that part that we're not going to use this season. Um, yeah, because we're not going to risk it in a car just in case it gets banned because then we won't have that uh, base to build on next season. And we'll just see if we can... It is that the best part that we've developed ourselves and that's because we've been working on it. We'll just see where that gets us. So we're just going to go ahead now and skip to the Rio de Janeiro Grand Prix practice and we'll come back when we're setting up the car. So we're back here for practice. This time I did go with the sponsorship offer of the 800,000 one, so we'll have 400,000 for practice and 400,000 pounds for the race. But as usual, any time that we've accepted the higher payment, we've never finished high up the table because we have to finish four for higher for that. Obviously, we've done that a few times this season. Obviously, we did it in the last race where we finished second and fourth. But every time we've actually gone for that sponsorship offer, we've never actually got it. So as usual, we're going to go with Santa Ana and Maya Latinen in the car. And I've been looking forward to this Brazilian Grand Prix because it's a lot like the Sao, the Sao Paulo Grand Prix, the track layout, especially on this track, track layout that we've got for the Asia Pacific Super Cup. It's a lot like the real life Sao Paulo track. And as like this year in Brazil, it's going to be raining and there's a forecast of rain for the race. So we're going to have a nice wet race here for Brazil. Um, so what do we need here? I'm not going to mess with the downforce too much. I do think we do need some high downforce even though we've got this for the mechanic here. It's going to be too far so maybe just knock it up a tiny little bit. And I think we're going to ni need nice long gear ratios because it's quite a nice flowing track as well so we don't need the acceleration as much. So should we go 63? And we need the handling all the way down here, so we'll go pretty high here. We need nice understeer. I think we'll leave it as that. Um, it looks like we need the intermediate. And I'll leave Latinen in the middle. We'll do we'll go a little bit higher on the gear ratios. She wants the handling quite. We'll go all the way with the handling there. Just see how that comes out for us. And I'll go out, set some lap times, do some practice on that, and we'll pick up at the end of practice and see what sort of times we got. And I'll talk through what changes we made to these setups. So, practice is over. Now, we didn't have the best of practice sessions there. Uh, 130 and 132, although that's where we finished last time out and we had a good qualifying. We weren't really trying to set lap times, just trying to get the setup just right. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go ahead now. We've got to get far, far above in qualifying. Um, it looks like it's going to be, we can't really trust that because there's clouds coming so maybe it's going to rain towards the end of the session we come back for that because once this is built we're going to be able to put one of these plus one parts in and then a minus one so we're going to do something like, we're going to do something like this aren't we so we'll do like that and then put this in so then we can have a part rated 420 towards the end of the season and then obviously using this one means we fill this up which means we get slot 5 open which means we can put 5 parts in so we'll be able to do this, this, this one and this one although we won't need to put that in because we've all got, already got slot 5 open so we'll do that one, that one, that one, this one and that one so that adds 130 onto that so we will have a base of 500 and we'll be able to improve it another 40 so we should have a part rated 540 going into next season which is an absolutely massive leap forward for our team so we're just waiting on the telemetry centre to be built for that 
we've got the gearbox here to work on we're not really working on much else because everything is pretty much reliable so we can just go ahead and concentrate on this gearbox here and obviously it's reliable enough but we might as well get it up as much as we can and maybe if we swap Dunbar over here yeah, it's going to be pretty much up to up to the level just before the race or would we be better off doing that because he takes <laughs> he takes a lot less time to work on the reliability of the parts so maybe that'll get that up as well and then we'll probably be around somewhere around the five, 355 mark for that but we might as well stick with this now because the votes tomorrow so we'll just go ahead and do the vote here obviously we're going to sink all our four votes into voting four but there is a lot of teams against this five so I don't think we're going to get put this put through because I think a lot of these have plus ones anyway I think we're going to lose this vote so we've got four votes for from the start so we're now five up hopefully it's going to go our way oh, he's using two three Everyone else is going against it, it looks like. We're actually losing now. Seven votes down. Six. Seven. Ah, oh, is it going to be up to... No! Eight to seven, as if. <laughs> so close there. Even though we used all our votes up, we got pretty close there. But we've got the HQ being built now. Five days to go. We might as well stick with this until practice now. Well, until we've done this, because then... We're just going to go ahead and see if we can get one of these parts in the gearbox. Uh, for the gearbox, I should say. So we're going to go with that one. Um, we can't put two risky parts in it because we're going to actually use one of them towards the end of the season. So should we go for a plus 10? Give it a little bit more boost. And this one, so then we don't have to get it up to speed as much. No, we do want to. We can't use that one because we want to use this one, don't we? So this one, we can get this one up to 420 now. So we do have an epic part in the car for the first time. And look, it would be amazing if we could get that telemetry center to level 3. Because then we could use these massive parts. You know, look at this, if we could get a part built one season with all of this, it would be amazing. It's going to be a long time before we can improve this. So our final lap, we're first and second. We're a long way to third place. So it's going to be an excellent, amazing 1-2 here. And that's De Graff there, is it? Did he go around without coming into the pits whilst he was out of fuel? Does that mean like a retirement? He ran out of fuel here on the last lap. So has he gone round again? We know a few, or is it just taking him that long to get to there? <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Uh, Latinen is falling behind Santa Ana here. She's not the better driver and a car's not as good. But look at that, Santa Ana in first. Just crossing the line and we'll catch Latinen crossing the line here. Across the line. Yeah, this one's for you, Fuzzy Face, says Santa Ana. And all right, P2, nice one, says Latinen. An amazing result there, one and two. I don't know what that's going to do for us there in the championship standings. Maybe it puts us somewhere close back to first place somehow. I said I was looking forward to the Rio de Janeiro Grand Prix because it sort of matches the track of the Sao Paulo Grand Prix, which is one of my favourite circuits. It's always been one of my favourite circuits from playing the early F1 games. And, um, yeah, absolutely amazing result there. I can't quite believe just the uh, weather playing into our hands there as everyone else made this sort of weird early pit stop. Although they were forced to come in early and change to these dry tyres. Otherwise, they'd have to come in and do a, another lap on the intermediates whilst making a pit stop for fuel. So it was the only sort of option they had. Um... Maybe it's because the AI has the same information about the weather that we do. That they can't see four laps ahead. And no, I don't think anyone has a forecasting centre. But we took that risk in going a long time on the intermediates. I'll try to go as long as we could. And it worked out an absolute treat for us there. First and second. We've got no dodgy parts. Um, so who else is with us round... Um, it's the, we've got an MRT near us, haven't we? Monroe, so she's outside the points. And the other one was a Bower. I don't think it's Co it's not Costa, the other bower. Yeah, it's Cruz is who's a top in the other bower. So a bower did finish in the point points, and we've got two bonus points there for Santa Ana, so she's actually ended up with two points. Uh, Gabriel Sars moved down, so we finished first and second. Look at that, the first time we've... I think that's the first time. Yeah, definitely the first time that we've had both drivers on the podium there. Costa, a whole 32 seconds behind there. First place trophy, there's a second place trophy behind here somewhere hiding. And look at that, Santa Rana now up into third place again in the Constructors Maya up into sixth. Absolutely mighty duo there. 
So where does that put us? Up into second and two points behind the Esprit now. I said at the beginning of this update that we would have no chance of catching the Esprit. And I don't think we've got any chance of keeping this going because it's just by an amazing amount of luck there in that Grand Prix. Although though, not amazing, just got four votes to put into this. So hopefully we can get that push through. I'm guessing a lot of the teams are going to vote against it. Hopefully they don't and we get uh, spec rear wings put in here much like the engine. That means it's a bit more competitive. Um, everyone has the same rear wing. Obviously that's the worst part we have because we haven't been working on it just in the hope that we could get this vote put through anyway we need to build a gearbox now this is our third yeah it's our third iteration of the design we want to unlock the fourth iteration we can't quite do that yet because I think to unlock this you need to go green light blue so you need to get like the average part a good part and a great part just fill this up and that unlocks slot four so maybe we can do it early it's probably going to be a bit of a risk here. Like we fill that up, we fill this up. Uh, Latinum's part is a 334 at the moment, so we will be able to improve it to uh, so it's better than the current part that she's got. And then if we do that, that gives us now a great part. So then this should unlock the fourth iteration of the design and allow us to put four parts in next time. So we can probably go like one of the average, one of the goods, and then two of these. Well, actually, we probably do that one that one that one and that one so that would give us uh, 130 155 extra on top of this so we would be pushing just over the 500 mark for our gearbox that we should be able to get next season obviously with this one it's gonna put plus two this is one of the designers special component parts that the parts that they can build um, the next one is a risk level minus one no because we do need one of these next time to be able to unlock the fourth design do we or could we go bang bang that and then a minus one and use that part towards the end of the season and then build the last part as that, that, that and that I wonder if the game would allow us to do that because we can't unlock slot 5 because we can't put an epic part in but then we could put an epic part in here and unlock 5 parts like this, 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 this and this which would give us an amazing part for next season maybe we can do that so that's probably what we're going to do so we're going to go with this one this time and see if it unlocks slot 4 when the telemetry center is built. It's going to be done 9 days before the race. Obviously the reliability is up so we're going to be able to put it in the car. So hopefully we can get the performance worked on before the next race and have a nice uh, new part that's a lot better than the current part in the car. So we've just got that vote coming up. So we're going to go ahead and skip to there. There's not much else to do. We're still working on a, lot, a few parts although everything's pretty much up to scratch we don't have any parts we can improve in Santa Ana's car uh, the parts in Latinum's car we can improve like three points and everything is reliable now not fully reliable but to the point where we don't have any problems so we're just going to go ahead and skip to the vote and come back when that's done so we'll just uh, yeah the car repairs done so we're going to go ahead and skip now right up to the vote or oh, probably the gearbox I think the gearbox is done the day before the vote looks like it 15 days does it tell us there two weeks left so whichever don't think we're going to get this put through because I think a lot of these have plus ones anyway. I think we're going to lose this vote. So we've got four votes for from the start. So we're now five up. Hopefully it's going to go our way. Oh, he's using two, three. Everyone else is going against it, it looks like. We're actually losing now. Seven votes down. Six, seven. Ah, oh, is it going to be up to. No! Eight to seven, as if. <laughs> So close there, even though we used all our votes up, we got pretty close there, but we've got the HQ being built now. Five days to go, we might as well stick with this until practice now. Well, until we've done this, because then we're just going to go ahead and see if we can get one of these parts in the gearbox. Uh, for the gearbox, I should say. So we're going to go with that one. Um... We can't put two risky parts in it because we're going to actually use one of them towards the end of the season. So should we go for a plus 10? Give it a little bit more boost and this one so then we don't have to get it up to speed as much. No, we do want to. We can't use that one because we want to use this one, don't we? So this one, we can get this one up to 420 now. So we do have an epic part in the car for the first time. 
and look, it would be amazing if we could get a telemetry centre to level 3. Because then we could use these massive parts. You know, look at this, if we could get a part built one season with all of this, it would be amazing. It's going to be a long time before we can improve the telemetry centre up to that point because we're going to want to improve other parts first. So we've got this part now, which is 384, can be improved to 420, 45% reliability, but that's no problem because we don't have anything else to work on. We do have a plus one wrist part, which is obviously negated by this, so it's minus one. So that's going to be ready 15 days after this race, and obviously it's a long time till the Australian Grand Prix, so we're going to have a nice new, really high rated part here for Santa Rana. And we'll see what sort of, uh, we'll see how competitive a part rated 420 is compared to the other teams we are making quite a giant leap forward with that so hopefully we can get pretty close to them so that's going to cost 1.4 million we've got enough this time out and we'll have enough uh, enough money after the next race to build that last part that part that we're not going to use this season um, yeah because we're not going to risk it in a car just in case it gets banned because then we won't have that uh, base to build on next season and we'll just see if we can, it is that the best part that we've developed ourselves and that's because we've been working on it. We'll just see where that gets us. So we're just going to go ahead now and skip to the Rio de Janeiro Grand Prix practice and we'll come back when we're setting up the car. So we're back here for practice. This time I did go with the sponsorship offer of the 800,000 one so we'll have 400,000 for practice and 400,000 pounds for the race. But as usual, any time that we've accepted the higher payment, we've never finished high up the table because we have to finish fourth or higher for that. Obviously, we've done that a few times this season.